Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the concept of cell theory. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do two things for us. Number one, subscribe to the channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to continue making these educational videos completely free. And number two, please disable ad block. We understand that the ads are stupid and they're useless and they get in the way. But again, it allows us to continue making these educational videos without having to charge you anything and without having to make you go deeper into debt. So with that being said, let's dive right in and let's talk about the concept of cell theory. First off, we're going to talk about the useless information. Now, the useless information I want to give you because I want you to have a good understanding of science, but uh, we will also be discussing the topics that will definitely be tested, especially the high yield concepts about cell theory that will come on your exam. So let's talk about the year 1650. 1655, there was a monk by the name of Robin Hook. He was also a researcher. He looked into, you know, plants and a lot of things, and he saw that there were crude structures in cork. He saw, uh, he looked at the cork molecules. He used a crude microscope and he magnified the actual structure of the cork. And what he saw was that there were small honeycomb-like structures. Okay, the cork itself was made up of honeycomb like structures, which makes sense because cork comes from plant malt, right? It's a plant, uh, I guess it is a dead plant. Um, and he saw these small honeycomb like structures in them. And he called these small honeycomb like structures cells because they reminded him of this cell he was staying in uh, as a monk. Okay, so that's how cells got a name. Now, these were dead because they didn't have any nuclei. If you remember, you need to have nuclei in living cells because the nuclei are what is essentially causing the cell to be able to do everything. It's the brains of the cell. So if the brain dies, the whole structure dies. And if the nuclei dies, well, the cell is dead. Now, this was a very crude understanding. At that time, we didn't know what was really going on. It wasn't until the year 1674 that a uh, someone by the name of Anton van Leeuwenhoek actually looked at the first living cells, and he was able to actually see that these cells had nuclei. Okay, just in a few years, we noticed. And then the year became 1850, where Rudolf Virchow demonstrated that the disease cells could come from normal cells in normal tissue. And this was very important because this started giving us a better understanding of cells. And from there on, our understanding of small cells and, and the understanding of how cells can lead to disease rapidly grew and the cell theory was born. So let's talk about the cell theory, something you will be tested on and something you definitely need to know. So the cell theory has four main concepts. All of these concepts are very high yield. Okay, these are high yield concepts. These are high yield AF. High yield AF meaning, yeah, exactly what you think. You will be tested on these, so I highly recommend you commit these four concepts to memory. The first of the four is that all living things are composed of cells. You cannot have life, you cannot have living components without cells being present. Number two is that the cell is the basic functional unit of life. It is not the basic unit of life because you can argue that proteins are the most basic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but everything that is happening that is allowing a organism to live is happening within the cell. Therefore, the cell is the basic functional unit of life. All right. Number three. Cells only arise from pre-existing cells, and we know that. We know that cells are derived or they come from something called stem cells. Stem cells will then differentiate and they will become different types of tissues, okay? Tissue one, tissue two, and then tissue three. But all of these tissues are actually different cells. They are composed of multiple cells within them. So cells come from pre-existing cells. And then finally, one of the most important parts of this theory is that these cells carry genetic information in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that is passed on from the parent to the daughter or the replicate cell. Okay, DNA is very, very important. We will be discussing this concept more and more in this lecture series, but definitely DNA gets passed on, especially during when the cell is replicating. All right, now there are certain things you need to know about the cell theory. And one of the things you definitely cannot move forward without understanding is that there are exceptions to this cell theory. You see, this cell theory was basically composed when we had a general understanding of cells overall. And when we're talking about cells, we're talking about eukaryotic cells for the most part, right? As well as prokaryotic cells. 
But there was a component, there was a organism, I guess you could say, that we didn't know about at the time, and those were viruses. And the reason why this is important is because viruses will break the third and fourth law. Viruses do not need to be, uh, do not need to come from pre-existing cells, number one. And number two, they do not need to carry DNA. So viruses actually cannot reproduce on their own. They're not able to come from essentially themselves. They're not able to separate, right? Pre-existing cells mean if you have a cell, you will replicate from that cell into two cells. Whether they're exactly the same or different doesn't matter, but you will be able to replicate from a cell, all right? Essentially, viruses replicate a very different way. Viruses, so let's say this is a virus that we're talking about right now. Okay, this is what viruses tend to kind of look like, but they can vary as you may know. So viruses they actually replicate within cells. They replicate by invading other cells, okay? So this virus may actually go into a cell, all right, and let's say this is the nuclei, et cetera, et cetera, and it might take over the cell. And once it takes it over and controls it, it will then release more small little vir virus particles like this, Okay, it will release more of these annoying little viruses. So instead of it replicating by itself like every other cell technically tends to do, viruses invade cells, they take over the cellular machinery and cause more cells or more uh, viruses. We'll call these the virus, there you go. We'll call these the daughter cells or the daughter progeny to be replicated, to be released, okay? And then finally, they actually contain RNA. Most viruses contain RNA instead of DNA. They can carry DNA, don't get that wrong, but for the most part, you're dealing with RNA instead of DNA. Okay, so this slide that we're talking about that I'm gonna hover on for a quick second is very high yield. I'm gonna write the word high yield so you remember this. I highly recommend you actually commit the concepts of uh, cell uh, cell theory to your memory because this is something it's very easy to memorize it's not like it's really difficult it just requires a little bit of time and I recommend writing it over and over again and making sure you understand each concept because you could get tested on this really easily and these are just simple points easy points you can get for your exams easy easy points okay so remember all of this and remember the exceptions mainly with the viruses that actually break cell theory or that don't uh, always go in alignment with cell theory. With that being said, we've covered everything you need to know about cell theory. Thank you so much for uh, essentially watching. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was educational for you. If it was, please subscribe to our channel. And if you want to see more educational content like this, please go to uh, my please go to our website www.madmedicine.org, where you can find more free lectures where you can continue education, continue your education, and improve your knowledge. Thank you.